Hello everyone. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a serverless application that will replicate data from a DynamoDB table to an Elasticsearch cluster. The architecture consists of three AWS services, DynamoDB table, Lambda function, and Elasticsearch cluster. We're going to make use of DynamoDB streams so that the Lambda function received an event every time we change the data on DynamoDB. After that, the Lambda function will copy or replicate the data to an Elasticsearch cluster when we can query the, the, the cluster. We're going to be using the serverless framework for development and deployment, so it is necessary that you set up the serverless framework before uh, starting to, to do anything. So if you go to this link, um, you will have a step-by-step -step, uh, guide how, how to do that. So now let's go ahead and start creating our application from scratch. Serverless framework, so let's generate a new project. Gonna ask us to generate the project. We're gonna choose Python. We're gonna name the project. Let's name this project DynamoDB Indexer. Now here, and let's open up our project. Let's start creating our application. First, we are going to clean this up. There are too many comments there, just to leave it to the very minimum. We can also delete this section. We're going to create the functions anyway later. So the first thing that we're going to create will be our DynamoDB table. So let's go ahead and declare it here. I will just copy and paste a definition that I have created already. This will be a very simple table named episodes to store serious episode information. So we are naming our table with the service name. In this case, will be DynamoDB Indexer. After that, the stage information by default is dev and episode. The billing mode will be paper request. That will be cheaper for testing. And then here we are defining the attributes. In this case, um, Dynamo requires to define the, the primary key. In this case is the, the hash key, right? That will be our ID. And here we are declaring our stream, right? Uh, where this will be the stream that we are going to be using um, from the Lambda function. So with that, let's run this and see what happened. Oh, first, before this, let me let me add a few lines here just for making the, the command line more simple, right? Here we are declaring our um, default staging name dev and our default region US is to, right? So now let's run this deploy. Oh. So we need to see the into the directory SLS. No, we don't. I don't want to monitor this. Okay, I will run the command again. SLS deploy. And let's wait for the deployment. The first time it, it can take a little bit of time. So I'll probably pause the video and come back when, when the video when, when the deployment is ready. Now that our deployment is ready, let's go to the AWS console to see the DynamoDB table created together with the stream. Here is our table. This is the partition key that we declare, the ID, 
and this is the stream that is enabled. Our next step now is creating the Lambda function and binding it to the to the DynamoDB stream so it can receive data every time there is a new change in the DynamoDB table. Let's go ahead. I'm going to copy again the code for, for the function. We're declaring the function here, we're naming it indexer, and then this is the very important part, the event section, when we are declaring um, that this function is going to get triggered every time there is a new data in in this stream, right? We're getting the stream ARN um, this way from this table, right? Now we need to name our function index. Uh, we are going to simply print whatever is coming in the event, right? Now we are missing something here for the function to be able to communicate with the DynamoDB stream, the role that is assigned to the to the function need to have these permissions. If not, it won't be able to get data from the stream. Now let's go ahead and run this. Deploy. And let's wait for it to finish. After our, de our deployment is done, let's test that our LADNA function is able to get um, DynamoDB streams data. So let's go and create a new record here. So our ID will be 001. Let's name this. Um, Let's create a title here. Let's say Frozen Face Off. That will be the title of our episode. Um, let's go and say, okay, the serious attribute, SpongeBob, Square Pant, right? My favorite series. And let's save it. So this is working correctly. We should see the event print out in in the console <coughs> in the log group. Let's go here and here is right. Now let's go and see how that event looks like. Let's replace that. Say this is JSON to format this better. Format document. Okay. And this is the record that we get. The event name is the type of event. This is very important because we will be um, taking this into account for for doing the respective operation in the in in the last the last search cluster. And then we have um, DynamoDB. Inside we have the new item. This will be the data that is coming new. Our next and final step will be creating the, um, the Elasticsearch cluster, right? We need to create the cluster and then modify our Lambda function so we can ingest the data into, into the cluster. For that, um, let's first declare the, the Elasticsearch cluster. Let's go back here and again let me copy the Elasticsearch cluster declaration definition. Okay, let's go over it very quickly. Here we're saying okay our resource type will be an Elasticsearch cluster. Um, this will be the volume size how many instances, this is the smallest uh, instance type that we're declaring. Be aware 
that this is going to cost you money because uh, Elasticsearch is, is, no, is not free. Um, and this is very important, danger zone, that's why I'm putting this here. Please don't do this on production. I'm doing this so we can query um, very easily the cluster, but this is not recommended to do. And even though you, you might think this is secure because I, I can only query from, from, my, from my IP, but this is not really recommended. So now that we declare our Elasticsearch cluster, let's go ahead and deploy it. And this is going to take a lot of time. It may take uh, more than 10 minutes at least um, for the test that, that I have done. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back when the, when the cluster is created. After our cluster is created 15 minutes later, let's go to the AWS console and verify that our cluster is there. Okay, here it is. We're going to need this later on. So now that our cluster is created, our final step is to modify the Lambda function. So it, whenever it gets information data from the stream, it will replicate that into the Elasticsearch cluster. So for that, I'm going to copy the, the Python code in here. The, the, um, I want you to concentrate on what we are doing here. You can take a look at the, at the details later on, on the GitHub repo. So you remember this event has a records object is the when everything is included and then we can find the ID inside the key and a new image is where where the new data will come, right? So what we're doing here is saying okay, if the event name is removed, we're going to remove the document from the cluster. If not, we are going to override it. When it's new, it's going to create it. When, when the document exists, it's going to override it. As you can see here, we're using two custom libraries, request and, and this library. So this library won't be included out of the box in the Lambda runtime. So we need to make sure that when we exec execute the function, it'll be pre-installed there. So for that, we are going to use serverless plugin named serverless Python requirement that allows us to install any dependency with a requirement uh, file, right? So here we are saying, okay, we want to, to have these two requirements. To be able to use this plugin, we need to install it. And for that, we need to use npm. First, we need to initialize npm locally. And after that, we need to install the dependency. OK, we can see here in package.json that we have um, installed successfully the serverless Python requirement. The other thing that we're missing here is the permission to the Lambda role, because right now if we try to run this, it'll fail because the Lambda function doesn't have access to do any operation on the Elasticsearch cluster. So for that, we need the three lines and let me check okay we are ready so let's deploy again after our deployment is done we are ready to start testing our application but before we do that we are missing one 
configuration we need to set up our cluster endpoint in our lambda function there is uh, an env environment variable we can see it here yes host and this is how we're getting it that is the, the Elasticsearch cluster um, domain name so we need to go here and here is okay save it now we're ready now let's go to our DynamoDB table let's modify this record let's say we want to add a new attribute episode Episode 156. Uh, if we go to our Cloud Watch, okay, here is our record. It is the event name is modifying. So if our record is correctly inserted in in our domain cluster um, let's query our cluster and make sure that the data is there so we grab this URL we put the index now the type I'll write this correctly, episodes, and then the ID, 001. All right. This is the attributes that we have in our DynamoDB table. We can see it here. Okay, episode ID, series, and title. Episode... ID series and title. So of course this is not cleaned up. As you can see, um, it has the type that DynamoDB sent you as part of the event, but that's something that you can do very easily in the Python code. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and see you in the next one. Hasta luego.